Uh, how do I, what do I call this stream? So I want to, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. I had this idea as I was thinking about kind of like when I was reading, I was, I was reading a lot of the responses people had to all this Smash Nintendo drama. And I saw a lot of people saying, well, Nintendo doesn't know you guys shit. You're entitled. You're a bunch of whiners. Any decent video game publisher developer would never kowtow to people like you. And so I was like, okay, is that really true? And then I realized that, you know, in my time as a gamer, one of the games I dipped my toes into was the competitive Catherine community. Uh, a smaller scene, but one that's had side tournaments and FGC tournaments and stuff like that. And I was thinking, you know, what if I compared how Atlas has treated the Catherine community with how Nintendo is treating the Smash community and did a little stream talking about my experience in the Catherine community showing some of the content that's come out of Action Esports. They did a really good video that I actually have yet to watch. They they alerted me to it because apparently I'm in it, but I haven't seen it. But so basically in 2016, uh, one of my good friends back then, Dasibro, and some of my other friends from like the anime fighting game community in NorCal, they were involved in this game. And I had told them from a long time ago, basically, I saw some of their VODs and I was always, I would always comment on all their videos and stuff. And I said to them, you know, if I ever come to NorCal, I want to play you guys. And somehow it came to be that I started hanging out with Dasibro and we started playing Catherine basically. And off of that, off of pretty much us and our little friend group, we started kind of hyping up the competitive scene again. And we started, uh, you know, running the game at, at tournaments. Genesis 4, I actually, so if, you, if I actually go into Smash GG, I actually have a TO, like I have, an, I have access to the admin page because I've run a tournament. And the tournament I ran was Catherine. I ran Catherine at Genesis 4. I was actually, a, so I was actually a Genesis TO. I ran a bracket at Genesis. So I'm allowed to say that I'm a Genesis TO. So we started running, you know, events at all these majors and commentating them and stuff. And it was, it was actually really great because uh, we had this Evo side bracket. So this was Evo 2016 Catherine. Okay, I look like Grand Finals or something like that. So this was us playing. We got us a little, little intro cinematic from Catherine. And this was great because this stream drop. This is me. When they fall. However, that's... Oh, this this must be analysis. Oh, this is Shaz doing analysis. He's the number one player in, in the world now. But this was, this was basically... This was so sick because we had like 3K... 2K, 3K viewers, like the whole stream for the, for the side break, for the side event. For an Evo side event, that's really good, I think. Like, we just had, like, a consistent 2K, 3K viewers. Stream chat was popping off. Yeah, man, it's a good game. I always say, Catherine, first and foremost, like, people ask me, should I play this game? I'm like, dude, well, the, the single-player experience is actually so good. It's, like, such a good... Because it's... First and foremost, it's a puzzle game, right? It's a puzzle game. The idea is you've got your, your, your Vincent Brooks or whatever. Is, is it Vincent Brooks, I think his name is? Vincent... Anyway... You're going through like a week of your life where you're basically getting these shitty nightmares where you have to climb this tower. And that's the that's the core gameplay. And the idea is like people all through the town have been having these dreams. And if they die in the dream, they die in real life. So you got to climb this tower to save your own life. And then in the daytime, you're making decisions that will impact kind of how the game storyline progresses because you've got this girl that you're supposed to be getting married to. She's been your girlfriend for six years, but then there's this other girl and they're both named Catherine. Catherine with C, Catherine with the K. And then you start having an affair with her. So there's kind of this like story and there's this puzzle, you know, puzzle gameplay uh, where you're climbing this tower and you got to move blocks around to climb this tower. Oh, and first of all, and yeah, the, the, the single player gameplay is fucking phenomenal. Like one of my all time favorite single player games, just really fun, uh, very hard, but very hard in a fair way. You feel like smart. You feel so smart when you beat a level. You feel like, oh, oh, I really did that. It's such a great game. It's really such a great game. The game always got great viewership. This is, you can see we're at Evo. You can see there's a million people in the background because it's Evo. Um, you can see that I'm wearing a button down white shirt because I had to commentate melee after this. Uh, but yeah, this was like the, this was the first time that I played this game at Evo. Uh, I took a set off Dacid Bro and then he reset Grand Finals and beat me in two sets. Uh, and I think I was also the first person to take a set off Dacid Bro in basically ever i think or at least since 2012 so the narrative that was really interesting with with catherine back then this is in 2015 2016 was norcal was really strong so it was like dasibro was the number one player in the world back then um and he was always the number one player people thought he couldn't be beat and then there was a group of like three people in australia who were really really good as well for some reason australia and norcal were the two competitive scenes that were fucking and we'd always shit talk each other blah blah, blah all this but the thing was 
I played all the Australian guys in tournament, and they were all slightly better than me. They all got wrecked by Dasset, bro, but they were all, they all beat me in tournament, barely. So I was kind of like the NorCal number, like gatekeeper, and then Dasbro was the, the guy that actually won the event. So like I would always get third. Like Genesis, I got third, and then Pen Ninja, who was from Australia, got second, but he got stomped by Dasbro, who got first. Um, and there were no Australians at Evo. And that was kind of the nervous. There was two scenes, NorCal and Australia, and we should talk to each other in a friendly manner, of course. Um, but it was great because there was that international, like, like when are we actually going to get to play each other? Like, Australia is so far away that obviously we don't get to play each other except if they come to the U.S. or if we somehow go to Australia, which we never did. Now, and ever since, like, 27 and onward, I think MDVA, East Coast U.S. is solely the best region. They basically all started playing in the wake of the rebirth of competitive Catherine that we kind of spawned in NorCal in early 2016. And then they got crazy good. Like, Shass is now... Far and away the best player, absolutely untouchable, and and he's number one. And I I played him in tournament once. I played him at a CEO or was, maybe it was a CEO Taku. Uh, I I want to say he beat me, but this was before he was even the number one player. Yeah, Catherine competitive is fucking amazing. So and 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 we've had little you know articles and shit in the past. We had a Kotaku article. This is tw- this is 2017. This is already on full body. And uh, the thing that was really dope was like. We had this, um, we had this kind of resurgence of, of Catherine in, in early 2016. And when they announced Catherine Full Body, which was the remake to Catherine, and the, the Japanese devs from Atlas, they basically announced all these features and they said, you know, this is what's going to change. So there's a third Catherine, you know, they're introducing a new character, all this stuff, new endings, new episodes, new anime movies, sexy events, all this shit. And then, and then there was this little, dot that we thought was fucking really cool in the west uh they said uh one of the bullet points was there was an unexpected level of excitement for the competitive mode overseas so online battles are being included and we thought that was so fucking cool that atlas took note it took wind caught wind of our little catherine resurgence where we were running it at tournaments and they're like damn let's literally implement netcode so these guys can play it online i mean that's fucking crazy Right? That's fucking crazy. Because, like, it even says overseas. So, like, we know it's us. Like, who else could they be talking about? It's not like they had some fucking crew in Japan that's running this game. It was, like, literally, their tournament players for this game overseas. We're going to build a netcode. What's up, Melvin? Good evening. I know it's Atlas. Wasn't it also a spinoff sort of, too? No, it's Atlas. And the cool thing was Atlas was always... They were always super cool to us, man. Anytime we were streaming it, Atlas USA had a Twitch account. And they would come hang out on our Twitch chat. And they would say, like... They would say shit to us in the Twitch chat. Um, they were very, like, close with us on TightKnit, on Twitter, and stuff like that. You, We always got this sense that they were kind of looking out for us. It was really cool. Um, looking out for the competitive community. At least, like, at least whoever was running the Atlas USA social stuff. And then also just the Japanese devs decided to literally implement Netplay. And then you compare that, you know, and to, 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 to kind, of, kind of how Nintendo has handled Smash. And you kind of feel like, man... Couldn't we have gotten, couldn't Nintendo have thrown us like one tenth of a bone? Like imagine, you know, like, uh, who was it said earlier in the chat? Um, official Atlas West. Here you go. Cause it, well, it's a five hour VOD. So they didn't split up into the matches cause it's literally a five hour VOD, but they, they uploaded the whole fucking thing. It would have been cool if we got Twitch chat in here too. Yeah. This was on the official Atlas channel. They didn't split it up into little individual matches, but they uploaded the whole five hour VOD, which we thought was really fucking cool. Okay. Let's watch Action Esports. Is, it's already got 150k views. I'm sure at least one person in here has already seen it. By the way, shout out to everyone at Action Esports. I was a big fan of theirs in the early days. They finally started getting big with Overwatch when Overwatch League was a thing. Um, and I was, I'm really proud of their rise because I remember when they were super tiny. This game is this super stylish, is by the way. If you haven't, if you haven't played this game and you haven't seen like the footage from this game before, you might like you might be thinking this game kind of looks like Persona Five. And that's because it's by the same devs, obviously. It's kind of got that vibe. In February of 2011, Atlas released Catherine, a social sim crossed with a puzzle platformer created by the director and producer of both Shin Megami Tensei and Persona, Katsura Hashino. But alongside the robust and interesting single player experience was a head to head multiplayer mode. This mode, seemingly included as an afterthought, pitted players against each other in a best of three race to the top. Yeah, this the versus mode was definitely, surface, it definitely felt like an afterthought. The versus mode definitely felt like it was just some, some shit they tacked on at the end of development because they were like, oh, this is like, 
this would be cool to build and it'd be kind of fun or whatever. Like it was definitely, it definitely felt like an afterthought. Like it didn't feel like the main mode of the game. You know what I'm saying? Change the flow of the game. A white block would spawn a movable block for you to place wherever you wanted. A black box that would spawn an unmovable platform and an X factor that allowed players to climb at double speed. Yeah, so we this is called the energy drink. That's the official name of this item, but we call it because it's literally a comeback mechanic that makes you glow red. We call this the X factor because it's literally Marvel 3 X factor. And the idea is you got to play. If you just play to outclimb your opponent, usually they'll get an X factor and they'll be able to catch up to you. So that's why... As it turns out in competitive Catherine, often you actually just want to fight your opponent and, and, and kind of beat them down and make them and make them kind of die and like basically checkmate them in a sense. It, it was maybe the best thing you could do was to kill your opponent instead of climb to the top. With Why this, did he not combo that? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, this is oh, this is old footage. This is super Yana Koopa. Instead of yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. like anytime you, you do, do to kill your opponent. In this, you would definitely, typically you would hold down. It's pretty safe. With this realization, the competitive mode to Catherine took a pivot away from the playstyle you learned in the single player campaign. A pivot. And started to form its own identity, requiring different strategies. And this is very and important, by the way, because mindset. one of the competitive Instead Catherine players is Ghoul02, who was a phenomenal Catherine speedrunner. He had the world records for Babel. He would play Babel with two controllers. He played two player mode with one person, and he would have two controllers. And he would speedrun it with two characters, and he was fucking amazing. He would enter a competitive Catherine tournaments. We were all buddies. And, you know, you would think, holy shit, he's so good at seeing these climbing patterns and fucking battle mode, and which is basically the the the, tri the tr time trial challenge mode where you try to go up, like, 500 stories or something, 500 floors. And he was fucking phenomenal at that mode, but, like, you know, I mean, he was really good at the versus mode, but, like, he was still a step under Dacid, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was still kind of on, on our level... I was probably roughly the same level as him. I don't know if we ever played in tournament, but I want to say we were similar levels. I think we money matched one time and I might have even beaten him, but the game is hard playing normally. This is a very fun, but very rewarding game because like you'll go even as early as like the third. I remember when I played for this game for the first time, like back in 2012 when it came out, like the second level, I remember like because I, I played it on like hard mode because the cool thing about this game is that it's not one of these games where that, OK, you know, there's easy, medium, hard. But it's not just like the game mechanics change with the different difficulties. There's actually three versions of every stage. So if you play on hard mode, you um, you actually uh, get different versions of the levels. Thanks to the efforts of David Dakid Bro Browlet and Sean Koopa Huang. What do you mean Dakid Bro? Catherine it's Dakid Bro. No one expected. Dakid Bro. Who the fuck is Dakid Bro? Uh, so that's we, we by the way, like fam relatively famous. Night, um, we got so addicted. You know, anime know fighter player. We ended up showing up the next Pretty day. Pretty strong. Uh, that's the homie Pava. There was like maybe 30, Pava, 40 right? people entering that tournament. And that's we bro, people uh, what we had discovered. Pretty good, uh, discovered you know, Blaze Blue player. Followed, you know, some of the, some of the laws. Uh, of Persona games. 4 Arena player. The tournament at NorCal and Had some good wins over Japanese players in those Twitch games. And became a modest hit, garnering thousands of views. Which, in the early days of Twitch, was quite the accomplishment. For a while, the game continued to toil in obscurity. But soon... NorCal would find that they had a new regional opponent in the world. Over in Australia, a See? small group of people they did their had been cultivating for this video. a scene of their own. And soon, a rivalry between the two regions would form. A player named Location Rob would make his way over to the States and challenged one of the co-originators of the competitive scene to a first to 10 money match. Which, small as it may be, was effectively the first international competition for Catherine. Although Rob did not return home victorious, he did return educated, and for a time, both communities would continue to level up on their own, out of the limelight. This remained business as usual until 2015, when despite all the odds, Atlas decided to sponsor Catherine's entry as a side event at the Evolution Fighting Series. Right, for the first time, right. Catherine would be put on a truly global stage, and allowed to show why they should be taken seriously. You guys hear that? Atlas decided to sponsor this event? Like, dude, can you imagine if Smash did that for fucking, or Nintendo did that for fucking Smash? For a game like, this is like, I mean, this, Catherine's such an esoteric game in the grand scheme of things, right? Like, it's, I mean, it's not, it wouldn't take much. There's so much organic, there's so much organic hype around Smash. It really wouldn't take much. It really would not take much, you know? But he ended up dethroning Rob as the number one Australian to make nice. uh, second place in Ernest Spot in Grand Finals. As a that was really sick. But he ended up dethroning...
Frog. That was really sick. That was good timing. Australian to make uh, second place and earn his spot in grand finals. As he did That's that, basically he an actually invented a competitive technique that had never been used before. And he locked Rob out while they were both hanging. And it, it was a really, uh, truly incredible moment. Uh, the, the type that only comes from genius players. Uh, it, it was... Um, I still remember that moment when everyone realized he has actually done something that has never been done before to secure his spot in Grand Finals. However, the Catherine scene did happen to capture the attention of one very important and ultimately influential person. Chris Must Tove have been me. Aldenberfer, yep. a high-profile wow. player high and profile, dude. Look in at the Smash scene. That's, After speaking with have... members of the community, including Dacid Bro, Tove decided I can't to keep hearing all these compliments. and give the game a try bringing with him a slew of new players from the Smash scene. In this time, Toph would train alongside Dacid Bro and even help to- I actually did have a couple players, like Smash players that I was playing with for a while. Like Nintendo, we, we were co-workers at Twitch at this time, and uh, we would play after work sometimes. I actually would get Nintendo to uh, to play with me like after work. Um, and it was pretty cool. He was actually getting pretty good, so understand you know. Understand and develop a technique around a previously game losing bug. The tournament had more eyes on it than ever, Thanks in large part to the presence of Toph. I remember thinking T Chicken was would pretty have good. it, Dacid Bro and Toph would make their way to grand finals and brought with them the largest audience Catherine had ever seen. The match came down to the wire, but it ultimately was a really good it match. was Dacid Bro once again who would retain his crown. After Evo, the Catherine competitive scene entered what many would consider I'm its final stage. Players across the I country were jumping into the scene. I was pretty checkmate. Prison of Despair is a very scary and creating stage. new pockets of competition. In October of 2016. At CEO Taku, with the many hat. new members of the scene made their debut. Players like Mike. Look at our Converse at setup, dude. Jabali, Jabali, you know what Jabali likes to do? You know, CEO Dreamland, he has uh, the fucking Wispy Woods on the stage and shit. Uh, all this like Smash paraphernalia. CEO Taku, he had like a bed with anime merch on it and shit. And a little beanbag with anime merch. It was like the most comfiest. Like we had Chiaki from fucking Dog and Ropa. We had all this weeby bullshit. It was great. Like he always does like a themed little setup for the commentary uh, at his at his CEO offshoot events. So CEO Taku, CEO Dreamland, uh, and this is the one for CEO Taku. So this CEO is me Ta and Moogle Parade, uh, another NorCal player. Or sorry, Drew Chuck. Not not not, not Moogle Parade. Moogle Parade also added this tournament. However, this is me and Drew Chuck at a. Uh, commentating top four for this tournament, CEO Taku. That Catherine displayed one of its major faults as a competitive game, netcode. More specifically, the fact that it had none. That's right, if you wanted to take part in the Catherine scene, you had right. no choice but to find people to play with in person. This limitation prevented many would-be climbers from entering the competitive ranks, and also had the effect of insulating regions from each other outside of major events. You know, we have Parsec now. Is That's the crazy part. So, like, you don't even need netcode anymore. Isn't that fucking crazy? We have Parsec now. We play on Parsec now? That's what I would assume. Because I've heard that I've heard that the full body netcode isn't even really that great. Is Catherine on PC? Catherine Classic is on PC, but was released like a month or two before full body was released. The old Catherine's on PC. And then full body's on Switch? Ah. Catherine Classic on Steam, full body Switch. Ew. And then which one do people play? We play both. But when you want to play Parsec, Parsec, you have to play Catherine old school. You can't play full body, right? Yeah, that makes sense. This created an environment where dramatic improvements in one region wouldn't trickle down to the rest of the community. And so it was that Maryland, one of the newest Maryland, Mar Maryland, Maryland. He's saying Maryland like it's a fucking amusement park, like Disneyland. Maryland. The land of Mary. <laughs> what is what the what the fuck? You <laughs> go down to the rest of the community, and so it was that Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> yeah, I think he's Canadian. I'm pretty fucking sure he's Canadian. I don't like that. I don't like that this stream has just turned into me critiquing this guy's pronunciation. I'm so sorry to whoever this is from Action Esports. You're doing a great job. I just think it's funny. All but decided grand finals. Sorry. Had reached. Side note: I always used to call it. Ashcon Esports. I got so confused. Bobby literally, Scar literally thought it was Ashcon running Action Esports, by the way. Scar literally thought it was fucking Ashcon. Where is a neat rock, paper, scissors mechanic that naturally comes out of 
when a player is farther behind than another, there's like a Mario Kart effect. Where yeah, that's a good way to put it. You are, the items are like Mario Kart. Spawn, what we call the X Factor. It's a drink that lets you climb two steps at once instead of one. Which, as you can uh -oh. imagine, in a game about climbing, that lets you climb two steps. Ah, uh, yo, yeah, you cannot pull there. You which, get, you get, you get spiked. As you can imagine, in a game about climbing, that's huge, right? Full body completely removes that. All items are completely random spawns. So, Wait, really? They made all items random spawn? Why'd they do that? So that kind of ruins this rock, paper, scissors dynamic. So that is definitely one of the hugest differences in full body. This change, though seemingly small, removes one of Catherine's key comeback mechanics, all but ensuring that the player that attains the lead will keep it. This change, among others like the limiting of invulnerability while hanging, as well as the addition of new items that can be used more offensively, Damn, it looks like changed you climb the game a lot faster. while hanging, as well as the addition of new items that what can be fuck? used more offensively, changed the game enough that it necessitated the creation of a whole new category of competition. So while Full Body was technically the same game, competitively, Full Body was treated much more like a sequel. It was during this time that Japan finally embraced competitive Catherine, throwing their full weight behind Full Body, and developing a solid foundation of players that could finally stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the rest of the world. The leader of this community was a player by the name of Mikasue. With the Mikasue? Rest of the, world. the leader of this community. I played Mikasue at EVO 2016, by the way. I had him in my bracket. By the way, he got 17th at the Guilty Gear tournament that year. He's very good at Guilty Gear. I don't remember which character he plays. I should probably know this. But yeah, I, I, I had to play him. Uh, I beat him in my bracket at EVO 2016. And, and he thought it was really cool that I could speak Japanese, and we, we ended up talking a bunch. And I'd like to think that I, you know, kind of influenced him in some way. Because he was really gung-ho after that tournament. He was always talking on Twitter about how he wanted more Japanese people to play Catherine and stuff like this. And I think he became really, really influential in the Japanese scene. And when it came time for Evil Japan 2020, the U.S. brought their A-game. Both Shas and Top 5 American player Michael Sig Davis made their way overseas to reassert their place as the top dogs. Um, no, yeah, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of nerve wracking seeing so many people there. And like a lot of them just like, you know, pretty good. Like we might get like some last minute sign on at a US tournament and they, you know, are okay. But I think just the, the, the sheer number of like average players in Japan is much higher. However, this mm. wall of Japanese talent couldn't stop the American players who would end up taking first and second place, sending the message that the US wasn't going anywhere. Unfortunately, this is where the story of Catherine ends for now. With the global pandemic putting a stop to most fighting game events, it has become nearly impossible for competition in Catherine to continue. However, this doesn't mean that the growth of the game has stopped. Far from it. In the wake of EVO Japan, it was clear to all players involved that there was still a lot to be discovered in full body and that the game was far from solved. And there's dumb in maps full on body. It is just a battle now between fighting and climbing because of the mechanics is that fights are very decisive and combo games are like huge. And so I think that the direction that the meta can head in is where uh, one mistake is literally game for somebody, and so it's super high risk, high reward playstyles. Massive climb thank cancel. You to that's a good name. That was a technique that we invented Arknox, in my house, Sammy, I think. Shampoo. Because we realized you could, in, as you're climbing, you can basically do a grab block input to, and it turns it into kind of a feint, uh, where you basically cancel your climb animation. And you stay on the same level, and that was an actual. That was an actual technique that we like discovered at my house one day. There was like a very short period where I had the claim for like number two in the U.S. There's like a relatively like a pretty short period where I was like probably number two in the U.S. But even at that period, I don't think I was better than Australia. So I was probably number four or five world. Japan only playing the new version of the game. I don't believe. Yeah, you are right. Isn't that fucking is that is that some shit? What is it about Japan only playing the new one? I mean, it's more that we're weird for playing the old games, I think. But whatever. They played OG before full body released. Okay. So it's more that Full Body just brought a lot of new people in and then they just played the new one because that's the one that was out. Whereas we're all old school boomers and we had the old game, like, and so we just played the old one. Yeah, I mean, it'd be really sick to uh, to play Full Body again. It's a shame about, I've heard the netcode isn't great. That's a shame that uh, it's not on Steam because then we could just run Parsec and then we would have just have no problems because Parsec's fucking godlike.
Probably, uh, honestly, like later this week, I'm probably going to start because I've I've actually never played even the single player mode of Catherine Full Body. You get the games to the single player. Yeah, that's the best part about Catherine. It's a very easy title to recommend because the single player is very good. And because the single player is very good, you could just play through it. And the single player also teaches you how to move, if that makes sense. Like by the time you beat the game, which is not a very long game, it's maybe like maybe 10, 20 hours. Original Catherine's great. They're both, they're, they're, I mean, I don't think they're that different story-wise. And then by the time you beat the game, you you kind of know enough about how to play that you can kind of just jump into the competitive mode and it's not it's not very difficult. You should definitely just get the game for its single player experience. It's just a really fucking fun game.